It's ironic, like uh, somebody had uh, shared with me in the uh, TED talk that uh, Bill Gates gave in about 2015. He laid out an agenda saying, you know, the next big challenge that maybe as a global economy we're going to face is is a pandemic. But at the same time, we didn't put in any kind of systems for preparation. The death toll in Italy is now higher than anywhere else in the world, including China. Now to growing concerns about the deadly coronavirus officially hitting the U.S. This is big breaking news coming in and this is very, very worrying for India. One positive case of the coronavirus has been detected in Kerala. I've always known this is a, this is a real, this is a pandemic. A 21-day national lockdown. It's a scary situation for all of us. There's so much uncertainty right now. It's an unprecedented experience. I have never experienced such phenomenon in my lifetime. You know, all of this just suddenly uh, hit us. It's like the hammer has hit the world. Nothing is going to be the same. Believe me, this is a shift. It is a shift of minds. It's a shift of behavior. Prabhavi Mukabale ke liye एक मात्र विकल्प है सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग कोरोना से बचने का इसके अलावा कोई तरीका नहीं है कोई रास्ता नहीं है Day one of the 21-day nationwide lockdown that's been announced by Prime Minister Modi last evening. To be honest, uh, the government had no other choice but to resort to lockdown. Nobody, no country is going to get out of this and walk into a normal life. That's not going to happen. It's certainly unprecedented. Hi, I'm Rasha Noor, actor and filmmaker. I came to Bombay a few months ago to start working on my next movie. But like millions around the world, I'm here under lockdown. The world as we know it is under a significant threat. Not only is it claiming lives, but it continues to directly impact our livelihoods. Due to the lockdown, we're facing something that could be worse than a recession, where millions are facing the harsh reality of unemployment. A great shift is coming, and being prepared for it means everything. What we need is information about changing trends in these industries to help guide us into this new era. We spoke to entrepreneurs about how their businesses are being impacted by the pandemic and how they feel the economy can be reinvigorated. The challenges these entrepreneurs are facing are many and not easy to navigate. All of this just suddenly uh, hit us. As someone who's running a company, there are uh, macro changes that that we experience. I have seen at least twenty five percent of the outlets closing down very soon because they won't have the incentive to pay those rentals which were uh, viable earlier, but won't be very soon. Uh, you know, the delivery fleet wasn't ready to come and deliver. The farmers were saying, you know, we also need to be safe, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. They they all were very hesitant, and a lot of delivery boys just left the town and went to their uh, you know, native places. So we didn't have the delivery fleet. It had a ripple effect, like a factory shut down. Now there's no production at all. Uh, all the daily wage workers uh, from the sewing unit have gone back to their village. So right now there is a lot of uncertainty of when things would resume. We are not. Since we're not under essential category, we are not doing any manufacturing at this point. Then we can't really help anyone else. So. The challenge is not just one thing for us. The challenge it goes through all the supply chains, from the packaging industry to the stock industry to the to the manufacturing to the production to at most the end, which is the delivery. We are in a world which might have zero growth. Right, zero growth is insane, man. It's it's the difference between slowing to a halt versus screechingly pressing the brakes and banging your head against the uh, window. Right, so very very different situation. I don't think anybody has planned for this. This lockdown is going to topple things for businesses in a way that uh, the longer it is, uh, the impact is going to be higher on the bigger the business. So so for the first time, you're going to see when the lockdown opens that scale. Is going to be the biggest liability uh, rather than an asset. There are going to be a lot of lot of issues that's going to come up. So you're going to see companies folding. You're going to see people entering debt. You're going to see lawsuits. You're going to see all sorts of problems. Uh, none of your historical models 
plan for this right like in no model would you say okay how much are you going to make next quarter zero you know like that's nobody has made a financial model which has those input metrics you know all of us are used to threats like terrorism we are used to the idea of war we are used to natural calamities those are things which we were mentally ready for at various points in life but this is something none of us are ready for the situation is intense all around but that leads us to one burning question now this is not the first time that humanity is facing wide scale challenges in fact when talking about the pandemic the analogy that comes up often is that this is like a war time situation in this sort of war like situation we are almost like a war situation there was this one research paper i read where it was basically comparing what is happening right now in a lockdown to what was happening in world war perhaps one of the greatest examples of human resilience in modern history is that of japan the country was in shambles after world war 2 but they rose rapidly to become one of the world's leading economies before the world war the majority of japan's economic power lay in the hands of a handful of big businesses the oligarchy but after the war The government put in new rules that led to the rise of several small and medium-sized businesses. This, along with the influx of cash from both domestic and international lenders, led to the creation of many new jobs, primarily in the manufacturing sector. The few of the successes that we observe where people have suddenly become very well off, well, Japan may be already post the Second World War. One thing we all know, state-led action was crucial. historically speaking you know there is a huge surplus of labor in the agricultural sector which is unproductive it's drawn into the productive sector which is basically the manufacturing and you know slowly you know wages are going to equalize and development that's the traditional way we think about it another great example of economic development comes from bangladesh in the early 1970s the country was ravaged by war destroyed by a cyclone and faced one of the worst famines the world has ever seen. However, this period brought about the rise of social enterprises that empowered the bottom of the pyramid. Professor Muhammad Yunus famously started Grameen Bank by offering microloans and enabling entrepreneurs in impoverished communities. On the other hand, Sir Fazl Abid started what is now the largest NGO in the world, BRAC, which aided communities through disaster relief education public health and economic development the new age entrepreneurs are the ideal citizens for any urban society because they uh, are asking questions they're saying why should we not have clean air why should we not have clean water uh, what's a better lifestyle for us to live in can we create that environment I've seen both the venture capital society as well as the startup entrepreneurs being very conscious and building those that part of their consciousness into their product and service. You know that's the beauty. We find ourselves in a challenging situation, being forced to adapt to a new reality. However, can this be viewed as an opportunity? Is this a chance to restructure systems for sustainability? Is the idea of social entrepreneurship and innovation the new way forward? It's the first time in the history of the world that we have a common enemy. And I found that in such circumstances is the situation which actually creates the scope for the emergence of a leader. I always ask this question to myself. Are entrepreneurs born or are entrepreneurs made? Right. The pivotal role of an entrepreneur is to get people together, collaborate in a meaningful way, and deliver value to uh, society at large. Everybody has an opportunity to revisit all of their original assumptions and decide how they want to proceed going forward, because nothing is going to be the same. And it's not. Businesses are going to have to evolve. and some of us are already adapting to the new reality first and foremost uh, i convinced myself whether we should be uh, you know continuing operations or not and uh, you know i uh, i 
I first did a lot of research and understanding what the situation is like and what is it likely to be. And my bet is that these viruses are kind of a new reality. When you put people into situations where they have to adapt, entrepreneurs are very adaptable a lot. The moment when uh, some of our competitors uh, shut down operations, we just tried extra hard and kept the kept the delivery going. And, and that just got us a lot more customers. Our customer acquisition is actually doing better uh, than before. They've stopped advertising, uh, even in our space for that matter, despite it being an essential services and it being completely legal to operate. Uh, people have stopped uh, spending online. The cost of a lead went down because there was no bidding. So all the bidding algorithms were in our favor. So we actually doubled it and we've uh, We've acquired uh, more customers than in the last 10 days than what we've acquired in the last three months. So it sounded like a crazy thing to do, but that we have believed in that uh, this is the time to be aggressive. And uh, only the aggressive ones will survive the war. So we're trying to do our bit when it comes to being aggressive and it is yielding some results. So that kind of decision making is what is essential in being an author. The spot on decision. This has to be done now. That foreseeing capacity is what we need. I have a machine that makes something uh, or does something. Now, uh, how do I repurpose that machine, right? To do something else, uh, which is which is relevant right now. Uh, we mean, we've seen garment companies now to turning into mask, uh, you know, making companies, or they're turning into uh, uniforms or you know, gloves or whatever. Right? Uh, so they're using that machinery for a different purpose, but using the core skill of what they have. Try to analyze and get inside to yourself to know how we can mitigate this particular state rather than thinking of how to close these things. That's how we came up with the mask. That's how we came up with these uh, you know, small trading of sanitizer bottles and everything. We are not in a position to close anything because few people are dependent on us. And when you see them suffer, it's not good. Agility is what you need. You need to be open to pressure ideas. Uh, you, you know, you have to think of ideas that can scale, scale up quickly and scale down quickly. We had a baby monitor company out of Bangalore uh, doing baby, like, you know, uh, it basically assesses breathing pattern and vitals for babies. It suddenly now has transformed into a non-contact uh, COVID breathing monitor. And it's being, you know, set up in quarantine facilities across the world. All these companies are agile and adaptable. Companies are changing the rules that once seemed immovable. And that's why entrepreneurs have the unique capacity to break the mold, innovate, and take countries to the next level. But with the economy in question, people are wondering, where will the money come from? We talked to the experts, and here's what they had to say. Please listen carefully. COVID introduces extreme sanity. They'll say, no, I don't have the money, man. I can't afford it. And if there are not enough buyers, then the price goes down. A lot of brands downscaling their prices to match the new consumption economy of this new user, which is going to be created post-COVID. When this thing opens up and, uh, you know, uh, there, there, there's, a, there's a massive change in the consumption patterns of the world that is likely to happen because of this shift. We are getting a lot of interest from our own investor network to say, are there good opportunities where we can invest in now, right? Because they suddenly woke up to a new world. People are waiting for an opportunity to start pumping in money and to start the whole economy boom again. It doesn't look like we have a liquidity crisis. Uh, which means that, yes, business has come to a halt, but we all still have money in our banks. Investors also have the money, they are just being cautious and deploying it. So there is capital available. The capital exists, but it's harder to get it. So there's always capital for the right idea, for the right business, for the right person. But once you bring uh, uh, an entrepreneur or an idea or a business uh, you know, that is going to scale up, uh, then you can always find money. But a typical venture investor is always high risk. They're looking for opportunities when nobody is looking for opportunities. 
I see a lot of opportunity for new services to be delivered. There's white space where there was earlier saturation. This is in every field. These firms are now going to start innovating and creating world scale opportunities. The challenge is to see how much of resilience we have as a society, how much we are able to support each other. The problems that we are going to face is a given. I have confidence in infinite nature of human being. Nothing is impossible in human diction. It may take time, but we'll be able to come up with a breakthrough. And human nature always progressed in such a way, historically. That was the essence of Renaissance. That was the essence of Reformation. That was the essence of enlightenment. Humans have tremendous potential. So we will win. Humanity has faced crises before. We came out on top back then, and you can bet we'll do it again. There's nothing more resilient than the human spirit. Just believe in that as we make this shift together into the new age.